Hey guys, Vladimir here. I've got a fun project for you today. But before I jump in, I just want to give a big thank you to every one of you because we have now passed 20,000 subscribers. So thank you for making this happen. I love being able to share my projects with you and enjoy the feedback that you give me. I look forward to sharing a lot more with you in the future. Now, many of you have messaged me to ask if I have a Patreon page or some way of supporting my work. I hadn't created a Patreon page because I wanted to focus my attention on my Fusion 360 online courses, but told myself that I would create a page once I've reached 20,000 subscribers. And since we've now reached that milestone, I went ahead and created a Patreon page and have linked it below. I definitely appreciate all the support. These videos take a long time to plan, to shoot, to edit. The 3D printed projects usually go through numerous iterations before I have a final model to share with you. I mean, just look at all the prints to prepare for today's video. I've got some special rewards for your support, including access to the Fusion 360 models, full step-by-step -step tutorials, and the ability to request content topics. Click on the link below to visit the page and for more details. And thank you for your support. Okay, let's jump into today's project. I recently saw this Twitter post by Filament Frenzy, and it's of a vase print of a 3D model by Thingiverse user Sergey Filamenov. Now, besides just being a beautiful model in print, there's something interesting going on here. I'm not sure how well you can see from this picture, and it took me a second to figure it out, but these are grooves or channels where the filament is then inserted into. You can kind of begin to see that something funny is going on with this zoomed in picture because you can see the layer lines here with the red, but then the layer lines disappear with the gold stripes. And if I go to this top down view, you can see that these are actually channels designed into the vase where you insert filament after it's done printing. I love seeing new techniques like this and shout out to Sergey for posting his model and sharing his creativity. Well, I like this idea so much that I decided I had to try modeling and printing my own. And so I did. I'll go over how I approach this design in a minute, but first let's talk about this beautiful print. I designed it in Fusion 360 and applied a shell here simply to have the model reflect the finished print. But in reality, I sent it to the slicer as a solid and printed it using vase mode. At first, I was trying to go with red and white filament, but here's the problem I was having. The red filament I have is PETG and the white is PLA. I wasn't sure how well these two would adhere together and it turns out not so well. I kept losing the bottom when removing the print from the build plate. So I ordered a roll of white PTG and while I waited for the Amazon order to arrive, I realized that I have a roll of green PTG, so we'll go with that. Turns out PTG adheres much better to itself. I took advantage of Prusa Slicer's ability to easily change filament during a print and had the printer perform a filament change at these two locations. After printing the vase, I then cut off a few pieces of filament and insert them into the channels that I modeled. I made this little vase just really as a way to quickly test out this technique, but I do plan on trying this out with much bigger vases. And since Christmas is around the corner, I wanna try this out with some Christmas ornament ideas that I have. So stay tuned for that. Oh, and I don't know if this technique has a name for it yet, but I'm just going to refer to it as filament painting, unless someone else has already coined the term for this. One issue I'm having, and that you probably noticed, is that when I insert the filament, it tends to pop out of the channel at this section. It's where the vase gets wider in the middle. I'm not sure exactly why that's happening. The channel should be a constant width throughout, but instead it gets wider as the vase widens. This made it a bit challenging in trying to design it with the right clearance that allowed me to get the filament to easily slide in the channel and stay put without popping out. And this explains all these test prints before I finally had a working model. With the current version of the vase I just finally settled with, I simply guide the filament back in after it pops out and since the channel narrows again at the bottom, it's able to be held in place. I'll be revisiting the design to see how I can fix this. If you have any suggestions here, let me know in the comments. Now, check this out. I ordered these LED orbs with the intention of somehow incorporating them into a design I had in mind. I didn't notice when I ordered these, but if you unscrew the bottom, all the electronics are combined in this little threaded base. 
Turns out this little base is the same size as the PLA bottom that detached from my original print. That got me thinking of trying this. Talk about a happy accident. How cool does that look? Okay, here's where I need your help. All you electronics whiz out there, how do I source just this part? This base and circuit assembly. It includes the RGB LED, battery, and USB charging. If the threaded plastic assembly is included, that would be great. But if not, I can print my own. Anyway, if you have a lead, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to get my hands on a few of these without having to buy the entire orb. All right, so instead of doing a whole 20 minute long video of me building this from scratch and going step by step, uh, I'm gonna try a different approach here. I'm basically just gonna go through my overall strategy in building this. And Fusion 360 is great for that because I can just bring this timeline back and then uh, show you the steps I took. And for the step-by-step -step video, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna upload that for my Patreon. So if you are interested in going through this and seeing the exact steps I took and also being able to download the Fusion 360 file, I'll have that for you um, as a, one of my uh, Patreon memberships and you can check out the details for that below. Okay, so let's dive in. You can see here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this model here, I'm just gonna, or the timeline and then just drag it all the way back to the beginning. You could probably guess that the approach I took here would be to create a uh, just a profile here. On, uh, this is the ZX plane here that I have. Um, so just that front plane. And then what I did is just go ahead and uh, do a revolve here to revolve that around to give me my basic vase shape here. And then I went ahead and created a coil. Uh, and you can see here I've got the vase, uh, there's my sketch, and then my coil here. So a vase and a coil. And then let me move up a couple steps here and I took a copy, I don't know if you saw that, let me just untoggle the coil. I took a copy of that vase, made a second copy of it, and then offset it by uh, three millimeters. So it made another vase, and you can see that they're over, you know, they occupy the same space here. So I have a smaller vase and a bigger vase, and I just made a copy of it and then uh, did offset faces to make it a little bit bigger. Or I should say I used my press pull tool to make the face a little bigger. And then I went ahead and let's see, I did the same thing with the coil. Let me bring this back. Let me just show the coil here. I took this coil and I went, when I created the coil, I went with the square um, coil here. Let me just open this up here. So you see how you have the option of going, where is it here, section, you can do square, circle, triangle. I went with the a square there and what that allowed me to do was then I can grab this face here and do a press pull and then made that bigger. So extended that out and then what I did there was I did a cut. So if I open this up, this is just a, a cut where I cut the coil from the bigger vase that I made and that left me with this channel down the middle there. And so that's the channel where I'm gonna be able to put in my filament. But if you, you can see here that it's, it's a bit too, it goes in too deep. And so that's why I made that second copy of the vase here. Um, because now I've got that inner copy there and uh, I just combined those two and that leaves me with a smaller channel here. And so to do that next, you can see another uh, feature here that's a combined. So I joined the two to give me, um, basically make that channel smaller. All right, and then the next part here, um, so this is a nice tip you want to take advantage of. You see this edge here that I have now that just kind of goes down that spiral. Um, I could have done like a, maybe a sketch up here and then a sweep, but instead um, what I did is I just used the pipe feature to create a pipe along that edge. And the nice thing with the pipe feature is you can just, you can have a pipe go uh, around an edge that you already have. And so just created two pipes going down these edges and then next, let's see. Okay, I just extended these out because I'm gonna end up doing uh, another Boolean operation, basically an intersect. I'll talk about that in a second. But you can see how these pipes, they just go right up to the end of that edge. So I needed to use the press pull tool to extend those out a little bit. So I did both of those. And then the next feature here, this is where I use the intersect tool. And the intersect is great. So actually before I go there, I'll show you. What I wanted to do, so I have this other vase here um, which is another copy. So let's say 
this vase and then this one with the pipes and I want it to intersect basically I'm telling it that I just want you to leave everything that these both bodies um, occupy the space that they occupy so uh, the portion of the pipe here that's outside of this vase that gets left uh, or it gets removed so if I move the timeline one more you can see that that's gone now and I'm left with sort of almost these like you know guide rails in the center or right here on the edge that allow me to be able to just put in the filament and just guide it right through you know that channel and so yeah that's basically the the technique and the approach I took there and then the next few um, items are just some fillets I added here just to round that off um, giving me a round channel and then uh, last feature here you can see is a pattern so I just did a circular pattern to go ahead and make uh, five of these total and that left me with this uh, this design here so that's the the basic approach that I took um, to to create this model and then to 3d print this um, you can see here your you know temptation may be to go ahead and shell this and send it but if you're printing in vase mode um, you don't need to do that and just tools make 3d print I'll send this to my Prusa here so I'll select my model click OK and here's the model um, right on my uh, this is just my, my Prusa Mini here. So we're in Prusa Slicer and to print this in vase mode, I just go up here to print settings and um, your first option here, layers and perimeters, you'll see an option for spiral vase. Every slicer will have an option. You know, they'll, they might call it vase mode or spiralize out, outer contour. There'll be um, some option there to do a vase mode. I'm just gonna click yes. Um, and now you can see here the perimeter went to one. It's just going to do one perimeter and spiral around. Another thing I did is up here in advance, I can change the default extrusion width. I just changed each one of these uh, perimeters to 0 0.8, and that went ahead and uh, it, it basically allows the filament to push out a little more filament. So um, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to make that vase because it's just one wall it's doing, so it's going to make it a little more rigid and a little more, more sturdy. And that's how I went about this. Just click slice, and there it is. One, um, for the color change, it's so easy to do that with Prusa, right? Uh, with Prusa Slicer, you just go up, hit the plus sign here where you want the first change to be, and then maybe another one like down here somewhere. I was a little more precise, but you know, and that's basically, yeah, it'll, um, when it gets, when it's printing and it gets to that level, it'll just uh, eject the filament. You put in the new filament and it guides you towards the change. So it makes it super easy. But yeah, you can see the channels in here. You put the filament in. Really, uh, really like this design, this technique here. I'm going to definitely experiment with it with a few more models. Um, so stay tuned for that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on my approach, go ahead and leave them below. If there's a different way you would approach this design, I'd love to hear it. And if you know where I can get these little electronic modules that come with color changing LED battery, the charging circuit, uh, all in this nice little package here. Uh, let me know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you're interested in learning Fusion 360 and want a more structured approach, uh, check out my design courses. I've linked them below. And if you would like the Fusion 360 design files and full tutorial for this project, the full step-by-step -step tutorial, uh, check out my Patreon link below. All right, guys, I will see you in a few.